I'm Jane Lindholm for VPR News and Vermont Edition. This March in 2008, I went to the Aeolus Cave in East Dorset, Vermont. I went there with wildlife biologists to check on the bats that winter there. The Aeolus Cave is the largest known bat hibernacula in New England. About 23,000 bats hibernate there until just about April. And the cave is beautiful. It's high up on this mountainside. You can see East Dorset from there. We snowmobiled up, and there was even a bald eagle while we were up there getting set up. And it's just, it's a gorgeous sight. But the purpose of the mission that we were on was to check on the status of the bats in this cave, because many of the bats here are dying. They have some that scientists are calling white nose syndrome. No one knows exactly what causes it or how the disease is spread or how it's killing these bats, but evidence from New York caves that were affected last year show mortality rates of 90 to 97 percent. So we're talking about a mass die-off of bats in caves that are affected with white nose syndrome. Now, ordinarily, you wouldn't see any bats outside the cave at this point in the year. They don't come out for about another month. But when I was there, we counted as many as 300 bats outside the cave or right at the mouth of the cave. The team that I went up with wants to monitor the sick bats to see if they can tell temperature differences and to try to see if they can figure out when bats are waking up, why they're getting so skinny, why they're starving. This disease, whatever it is, causes them to starve to death, basically. And that's one theory about why they're coming out of the cave early is because they have no energy and and they need food. So they were setting up equipment while I was there to radio tag several bats with these little gizmos, and they plan to check the data over several weeks to see the temperature differences in the bats and, and see if they can figure anything out from that. It's really depressing to spend time at this cave because you see bats in all states of death and dying. You see them clinging to rocks, flying up out of the cave and crashing into the snow. Some of them look for snow to drink. They're so dehydrated. They're skinny. They're malnourished. Their wings are showing signs of severe dehydration. These bats are all going to die. And it's unclear how many of the 23,000 bats inside the cave are affected by this disease, but scientists are pretty worried about it. When we went into the cave, we wore Tyvek suits, Mostly this was actually to protect the bats and to make sure that we didn't transmit anything from this bat cave to any other bat caves. But even before we entered the cave, the scientists were collecting bat specimens that flew out of the cave and fell onto the snow. And Scott Darling, the wildlife biologist for the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department, headed up this team. He was responsible for cataloging these specimens. This one was still alive, and it actually began biting Scott as he picked it up. But Scott told me you could definitely tell that this bat was sick. Scott sends these specimens to a lab in Madison, Wisconsin, that's dissecting them and then trying to figure out the cause and effects of the disease. They don't do that here in Vermont. When you walk into this cave, as I said, it's beautiful, but the floor of the cave is just littered with dead bats. Susie von Ottingen is an endangered species biologist for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and she was there also to look at the bats. She says that bats are really social creatures, and she was finding clusters inside the mouth of the cave where nine bats out of ten would be dead and one was alive, and and she says that they actually communicate to each other. So she was wondering what effect this was having on the bat colonies and their social lives. And, you know, scientists are just baffled. But they figure as many as 500,000 bats in our region are affected and that farmers could see the impact of a massive die-off this summer in terms of the amount of pests that come to their gardens and to their fields. Bats are very important to our ecosystem, as I learned while I was up at the cave. Scott Darling told me these bats aren't going to win a beauty contest for the most beautiful animal, but they're very important and very interesting, and the scientists who study them really have an affection for them and are just devastated by the loss of these bats. For my part... I've never been this close to that many bats and been able to see them and study them so closely. But the more time you spend at this cave, the more you realize that this is not supposed to happen. You shouldn't be seeing bats at all at this time of year, and you shouldn't be seeing bats outside the cave in daylight. So as you start to watch them fly out of the cave, they die in front of you. You look at how many are dead, and you think about the impact that this is going to have on our local ecosystem. And it certainly is a depressing thing.
but it's definitely one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. For VPR News, I'm Jane Lindholm.